okay, uh, it's a video I've been wanting to make for a while. And I've seen some other YouTubers make videos on this subject, and um, they're great. Uh, I encourage everybody to learn as much as they can. I, I thought that they might not have started at a m the lowest basic level, though. Um, so whenever you have a YouTube channel, you have to worry about what is the education level of or experience level of your viewers. And, you know, where do you start? Do you start at the very, very, very basics, or do you assume they have a, a double E degree? You know, how do you approach these subjects? And, and I have a really hard time with that. So I try to do uh, various videos. I try to do some at high levels, and I try to do some at low levels, and hope that the people don't lose interest. And, you know, if it's too high for them, they can tune out. If it's too low for them, they can tune out. But I, but I, try, to give a, I try to give a mix. So this is kind of a more a, a low-level um, video, and I, and I hope it helps some people. So this is going to be all about uh, upconverting DC to DC converters. Um, and so... Uh, this is the basic circuit of a DC converter, okay? There's some input voltage. This can be anything. I'm going to be using 12 volts. Um, and then there's some type of inductor, a, a, a diode, and a capacitor. So uh, if we take a look at this on a DC level, if we have 12 volts here, then this is just wire. And so on the other side, we're going to get 12 volts. So 12 volts here, 12 volts here, and the diode... Uh, drop some voltage. You don't have a perfect diode, and so you, maybe you lose about 0.6 of a volt here, maybe half a volt. It depends on the diode and, 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 and different things, but let's say 0.6 volts. So we should measure 12 minus 0.6. We should measure 11.4 volts here, okay? So 11.4 volts. And then there's a capacitor here. The capacitor doesn't do anything in the, in the DC domain, right? Uh, it's not going to pass any DC voltages. It, it, it only knows how to pass AC voltages. And so it's just going to act as a storage device. Whatever voltage is on it, it's going to have a hold. It. You can think of capacitors kind of like batteries. They're kind of short, short-term memory batteries. <laughs> um, and so they can hold a little bit of charge. Um, and so let's see what we have here. Let's, let's build one of these. Um, and, I've, and I've done just that. I was um, taking apart some, uh, uh, let me show you one. Uh, I was taking apart some uh, relays, and these are 12 volt relays, and uh, I, I, needed, I needed a part out of it uh, for a particular reason. And so uh, I, t I tore them out, and I needed the electrical contacts. And um, what was left over was this inductor, and I thought, well, what can I do with an inductor? Maybe, maybe I can have some fun with it. It's not a very strong electromagnet, um, but it is an inductor, and I thought, oh, maybe this would be a good learning experience. So, okay, so here's our inductor. This is just a coil of wire around a metal rod, and uh, so here's our inductor. And then here's our diode. I have a 1N4004, okay, that's a very common diode, a 1-amp diode. And so that takes that place. And then here's the uh, capacitor. So we're going to have a capacitor here. And we're going to have to put ground here. And we're going to have to put uh, 12 volts over here. So let's do that. Um, so this is a power. This is going to be hooked up to a power supply. And I have 12 volts here and ground here. So I'm going to put my 12 volts on one side of the inductor right here. And I'm going to put ground over here on the uh, capacitor. Okay. So now we have this situation. So let's bring in a voltmeter and measure some things. Um, let's see, let me bring in my voltmeter. So voltmeters have two leads and we need to connect one to ground and then we're gonna connect one to the other side. So let's, let's first connect it to our 12 volts and see if we have 12 volts, okay? So let me change the camera angle just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna be measuring 12 volts and I'm gonna be using a meter that we can easily read. And so, uh, this is a meter, and this is the needle, and we're going to go on the, on the middle scale here. So this is 0 volts, 10 volts, 20 volts, and 30 volts. So we're right here at 12 volts, okay? There's 10, 11, 12, so we're measuring 12 volts. All right, so let's measure the uh, voltage on the other side of the inductor. All right, so let's do that. 
and we get the same thing. We get 12 volts, right? Because all of this is wire. There's nothing else in the inductor, just wire. So we get 12 volts here too. Now let me move the uh, voltmeter to this side of the diode and it should be a little bit less. And it is, it's a tiny bit less. It's about a half a volt less, maybe, maybe even only 0.4 because we're looking at very, very low currents. And so that's eh, about, uh, maybe about point, let's say call it half a volt. We're losing about a half a volt through the, uh, the resistor. Okay. So uh, when we're on this side, we're also measuring the voltage across the capacitor, right? And so if we remove the 12 volts, that capacitor will hold that charge. So let's do that. I'm going to remove this and you can see that we still have 12 volts or 11 point 11 and a half volts. And it's going to stay there because there's nothing using that voltage. It's going to stay high. Now there's going to be some leakage in dia in uh, capacitors. No capacitors are perfect. So there you see it's now at 11 volts. So it's not going to hold that voltage forever. Um, and you can see it slowly coming down. So now it's about 10 and a half volts, but that, that capacitor is keeping that voltage stored and we could, we could use it, um, but we're not using it right now. We have no load on the, uh, on the capacitor. We have no buddy stealing those electrons and using them for, for some purpose. So it's, it's coming down. Okay. All right. So let's put our 12 volts back on. Okay. And let me move things here so they don't fall off the bench. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to do a funny thing now. I'm going to use a piece of wire and I'm going to ground this right here. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to tie that to ground. Okay, so where is that? That's right here. Okay, so that's right there. And I'm going to put a uh, tie that to ground and let's see, let's see what we're doing over here. All right. So the voltage is still up and, uh, it's a little bit higher than it used to be. That's kind of weird, but let's ignore that for now. I'll explain that later, but, but, but we can just see that, uh, we now have no, um, no voltage here. We have zero volts here and the diode, if we put zero volts here on the capacitor, that would drain the capacitor, but we put it on the other side of this diode, which is a one way switch, right? So it only lets through things. If something's bigger than over here, it goes through it. But if something is smaller over here, it won't go through it. It's a one way valve. Okay. And so even though we have zero volts on the other side of that capacitor, we're still holding, holding it up. Now, again, the capacitor is starting to discharge very slowly. So you see it coming down, coming down, coming down. Right. All right. So now we're going to do something very strange. I'm going to take my uh, ground and I'm going to tap it. I'm going to tap it on, on here. So I'm going to ground it, then let it go. Then I'm going to ground it, let it go, ground it, let it go. Let's see what that does. Okay. You can see the voltage is going up. Every time I tap it, it goes up a little farther. I've stopped tapping and it's coming down. I'm going to tap it some more. Okay. And right there we've hit 20 volts. And so just by tapping it, we generated voltage. Now there's nothing strange going on in the circuit. It's still all the same things. Got the inductor, the, uh, uh, diode and the, and the capacitor. That's all we've got. And all we've done is we've introduced a wire. <laughs> That's all we're using is a wire. Okay. And I'm tapping it right here. So I'm shorting this to ground and then I'm opening it up short to ground, open it up short to ground, open it up. And what happens is this coil of wire, like I said, it didn't make a very good electromagnet, but it is an electromagnet. It does hold, um, uh, magnetism inside this coil. And Whenever you have a changing magnetic field, you introduce a changing electric field. That's the way that generators work. Uh, you know, if you go to Hoover Dam and you go see, they have turbines and, and generators and they have magnets that move 
and stators that move and everything, and they're generating electricity because a moving magnetic field generates a moving electric field, and vice versa. A moving electric field creates a moving magnetic field. And so when I tap it here, we're creating, we're creating some AC electricity in here, okay? And it can actually generate quite a bit of voltage just by me tapping it. And we saw that. I got it up to 20 volts. And now why did it go up to 20 volts? Well, every time I tap it, a little bit squeaks through here, and it keeps adding to this over here. It just keeps giving, giving more and more and more to over here. So let's go back up again. And let me tap it some more. See if I can tap it up to 20 volts again. Okay, I've tapped it up to 20 volts again. All right. Okay. So now, let's put a load on the output. We're going to use some electricity, okay? So I'm going to use my... Um, let me zoom out here. I'm going to use my uh, resistor box that I built, okay? And I'm going to choose uh, 680k ohms, okay? 600, well, let's do even larger. Let's do 470k ohms, 470k, okay? 470k. And we're going to put that resistor right across the capacitor. So we're going to, we're going to discharge that capacitor with uh, 400 and, 470 ohms, okay? And there we go. We have discharged the capacitor and it is now, it is now zero. Let's see here. I'm sorry. I hooked it up to uh, 470 ohms, not 470K. Remember my resistor box has a little switch on it. I needed to put the switch over here to uh, 470K. So now we're at 470K. All right, so at 470K, a DC situation, uh, we are getting about 11 and a half volts, just the same as before. That's because we're constantly feeding this thing. Remember our circuit, uh, our circuit has 12 volts coming in and this is just a wire. So we're always having voltage going through this thing. Even though we have a load over here, our power supply is able to handle that, okay? And let's see, when, when we have this load on here now, let's see if we can generate that 20 volts again. I'm gonna tap on the, I'm gonna tap on the wire. And there we go, it's going up. So I'm gonna tap, 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 tap. I'm tapping on the wire. And I have to tap really fast. It's kind of hard for me to get up there, okay? And every time I stop, it's going to come down, and that's because we're using up that, that stored energy on the capacitor. We're using up 470K worth. Now, if I start to tap again, it goes up. There, we're at 15 volts. And I have to tap faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Can't quite get there, but it's going to come down. Okay. So, uh, so we know that by tapping on here, we can generate voltage, and we can use that voltage. But this capacitor is not, not going to store it very long. All right. So let's say that we're going to create a, a power supply out of this situation. All right. So what we can do is we can introduce a transistor here, okay? So we can introduce a transistor. And that transistor is gonna do the tapping, okay? Tap, 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 tap. It's gonna short, 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 short. Um, and, and we can do that. And so we can input a tapping signal, okay? So here's our tapping signal, all right? So tap, 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 tap. And then we can monitor the voltage, okay? We can have something that monitors that voltage, and we can like run it into a, an, a, a comparator. And let's say our comparator is a 15, 15 volt comparator. And then this is gonna come around over to here, and it's gonna say, there's gonna be a circuit that goes tap, 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 tap. And then once we reach 15 volts, this op amp will say, stop tapping, don't tap anymore, okay? And then it'll stop. And then the capacitor will come down, and then this will say, oh, we're less than 15 volts, uh, and it'll give a signal, it'll say, start tapping again, okay? 
So there we go. That is all there is to a, a, a boost converter. Okay. You have an inductor, you have some type of element that can short it out. And then you have some way of storing that energy. And then you feed that, this back in and send it in. Now you can do a start stop with tapping or you can set it so that you just tap a little bit or you tap a lot. Uh, so you could do that as well, right? And uh, I encourage you to look at some other videos that you can do pulse width modulation here and use the circuit to vary the pulse width modulation. Um, or you can just do a start stop thing. You could do all, all kinds of things here, right? Um, imagine you, could, you, you did something like this. You had, uh, you had a second, a second transistor here. Okay. You had a second transistor. Okay. And that second transistor is run by the op amp. So this thing's tapping along, but it won't tap to ground unless this transistor is on. Now you've got two transistors, which is, a, which is an and gate, right? You need this and this, you need both, right? And this could come around here and act as an and gate, right? So you could, you could visualize it this way. This is always tapping. You could have a 555 here and it would be going along merrily. And then suddenly you turn off this transistor and it's tapping away, but it's not doing anything because it's not referenced to ground. It's not, it's not going all the way to ground. And so, um, uh, anyway, I hope this visualizes it. I hope you kind of understand this idea and, um, the idea that, uh, this stored energy in the capacitor, uh, fires a high voltage. Okay. And, uh, let's see if we can't look at that high voltage pulse that's coming out of here. Let's put an oscilloscope on this point and see if we can't see that spike that we're generating when we do this tapping. All right. Uh, so what we have here is we're looking with an oscilloscope uh, on the uh, inductor. So one side of the inductor is 12 volts. The other side of the, uh, the inductor is uh, the oscilloscope. And you can see that I have ground here and I've set it so that the, the DC, we're looking at DC right now. Um, the DC sits right on that center, uh, that center line right there. Okay. Now I'm going to do some tapping and you can see that once in a while it gets a little higher than that line. You see, you see a funny little, a funny little signal that goes high and then it drops down. That high is the inductor releasing its energy and it's coming out and because it's charging a capacitor, it's, it's just a constant current and it's just holding that voltage there. And then it finally drops down. I think you saw it go high and then it drops down. Let's see if we can capture that. We'll do a, uh, we'll do normal triggering. Let's see if we can't capture one of those. Nope. There we go. So you see that it's uh, high for a little while, then it drops down. So um, that's the extra energy that's stored in the magnetic field of the, uh, of the inductor. And if you whack it on and off really hard, sometimes that uh, there can be quite a bit of energy uh, Quite a bit of energy stored in that, uh, there we go. Quite a bit of energy stored in that uh, inductor. And you can see there that we're looking at uh, quite a bit, uh, like an extra, that one is an extra three volts. So on top of the 12 volts is an extra three volts. So uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's the energy in the inductor. Okay, now we're looking at the uh, capacitor. And as I tap it, you can see the voltage going up keeps going up. And then when I stop tapping, it starts coming down. So it's just like the analog meter. Uh, it's just on the oscilloscope. So I thought I would, thought I would show you that. So, uh, I hope this is, uh, kind of demystified a little bit about, um, uh, DC to DC converters and, and how they work.